you mentioned in one of your videos that you keep the chalk in your hand to help you find the rhythm. Can you explain that for me? Yeah, uh, picture yourself having the pattern all lined up and knowing what to do. And you're back up on the one ball a couple of feet and you want to step into the line. And at the same time that you're backed up, you're chalking your, your cue and you're about to step in the line. But you have to walk up to the table and lay the chalk down and then back up again and find the line and then step into it. And keeping the chalk in my bridge hand allows me to eliminate that step of walking up to the table and laying the chalk down, and then, uh, and then backing up again and and finding the line. Um, it's hard to find your rhythm if you keep backing up and walking to the table and backing up. And, so it just eliminates that step. And I know guys that they go out and they, they buy this expensive chalk and they keep it in their pocket. And I just couldn't imagine digging in my pocket every time I went to shoot a shot or every other time or every third time. It would just break my rhythm. So you're a rhythm player? Yeah, I, I've always have been a rhythm player. I, uh, is when I'm really, really on my game, my rhythm's pretty flawless. Does it bother you when other players from other tables uh, get in your way or you have to wait for them to break? Or... It, yeah, it, it does bother me a little bit, but it, it's it's part of the game. Usually I take that time to, you know, walk to the table and get something to drink or order something from the barmaid or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's it's a bit annoying, and you know I like pool rooms that are spread out and have plenty of room, so that doesn't happen. But they're getting more and more rare. Do players purposely try to break your rhythm? Yeah, that happens a lot. When I when the legitimate players who've been around the block a few times, they they recognize it, and um, I've had. You know, on the occasions where I lay the chalk on the table, I've had players uh, hide the chalk, drop it in the pocket, do all kinds of stuff just to break my rhythm. I've had people send uh, barmaids over and girls over to talk to me just to break. They'll do anything to win. The most common technique is for the player, the opponent themselves, to just take forever and just stall and just find excuses to just you know, s slow me down. It's really bothersome in a tournament because you can't just pull up and, you know, collect your money and leave. You have to sit there and, and deal with it unless the tournament director is really on their game and really paying attention. Gun it calls it a tell. Uh, keep your eye on the chalk. Uh, it's currently in my bridge hand right now. I think I lay it on the table two times during this whole rack, which takes exactly a minute and 18 seconds, which is about average for me when I'm really on my game. Uh, some racks are a little faster and some are a little bit slower, depending on what I'm dealing with on the table. Um, but this rack goes pretty smoothly. The only mistake I make throughout this whole rack is uh, right from the start and shooting the one ball. And some people would say I shot the six ball wrong, but I disagree. And we'll deal with that when I get to it here. Uh, we're not going to get really, really analytical with with this uh, video here because I, I don't make any mistakes except for the one ball. Um, and, and the whole video topic is more about rhythm 
and what a rhythm player is. And I believe we're all rhythm players. It's just that some people's rhythm is slower and some people's rhythm is faster. If you look like if if you look at it at a player like Jason Shaw, it's very obvious to see that he's a rhythm player and he has a really fast rhythm. Um, and that's kind of along the lines of how I play nine ball. And this is a stun draw shot. Um, you're forcing the cue ball to that uh, left hand rally and up under the seven ball, but it's the wrong way to play it. There is no reason to take the chance of getting behind the seven ball. The two ball is right up under my arm, my left arm here, so you, you can't really see it, but that's the ball I'm trying to get shape on to get back on the three ball and straight in on the three ball too. Um, so yeah, there's no reason to taking a chance here. We could have stayed up a little bit high or above the seven ball and had the perfect angle to shoot the two and get on the three. So that, that this is a mistake, but it's the only one I make in this rack. This is just center ball, uh, what I call a wedge shot. It's just a stun shot to move the cue ball straight back up their down table on that on that three ball. So if I had gotten higher on this three ball, it would have been a lot easier to get closer to the three. But it's really not about getting close to balls. It's about getting the right angle on the balls. I wanted to get straight in on the three ball and just hit a stop shot. I'm at the perfect angle on the four to get to the five. Um, but I didn't get straight in. I have a tiny little bit of an angle, but I'm still going to hit a stop shot. It's just going to go a little bit to the left before the cue ball actually stops. And I'm just kind of kind of holding the ball. I don't want it to go too far left. Um, it'll still give me the same exact angle on the four, and I'll just be a little bit closer to the four. Uh, most amateur players would uh, put a little top on this ball and they would try to get behind the five to shoot it in the side pocket. The reason that's a bad idea is because uh, we often go a little bit too long and then if that happens you're going to be on the wrong side of the five and you're going to have a lot of trouble getting on the six ball from there. You'll still have to put a little bit of left on this just to get the right angle, but you want to come up behind the five on this side and uh, just roll up for it and shoot the five in this corner down here. Center ball here, you're just rolling up five or six inches on the six ball. I have the opportunity to get a lot closer to the seven ball on the shot right here. Um, but it's really not about getting close to the balls. It's about finding the right angle. And uh, that takes priority over getting close to the ball. Because if I put uh, right hand English on this and try to come back up table, you know, to get a foot or two away from the seven ball, it's not going to be any easier, and I'm taking a big chance of letting a cue ball get away from me. So with this shot here, I have the right angle to come off that left rail and play the line on the eight ball. This is bottom right to pull the cue ball uh, a little further down table, and the right hand English is spin it off that rail in line for the eight ball. But you want to stay up just a little bit high on the eight ball uh, for a right hand cut shot on the eight to, to just roll down on that nine ball. And once again, here's a stun shot um, to where you're just kind of stopping the cue ball, except we have a little bit of an angle, and there we go, right on the nine ball. 
Here's another tell that happens when I'm really, really feeling good. And it's a slip stroke that actually slips during the execution of the shot. And most slip strokes happen when the players doing their warm-up strokes. And on that last stroke, they'll be jacked up on the cue. But as they're getting ready to pull back on that final uh, warm-up stroke, they'll... They'll let the cue slip through their hand and they'll grab it further back on the butt and then they'll follow through. This one's a little bit different and actually happens during the shot. That poker terminology of tells is is an interesting issue for me, um, but it, it it you know it doesn't concern me that I'm broadcasting my tells, as Gunnett says, uh, all over the internet so people know about them. But uh, I, I don't keep it a secret while I'm out there playing. If somebody tries to stall me or shark me or whatever, I'm the first to speak up about it. And nowadays, in the old days, it it did uh, affect my game, but now I'm old, and it, it's kind of funny for me when people try to do it, because I say it as desperation, and there's really only one way to handle it. I mean, they can't come up and rip the chalk out of my hand, um, and if they never get to the table, they can't stall me, so, you know. The philosophy is just don't let them to the table, and if you have to let them to the table, don't leave them an easy shot, snooker them, and, and really frustrate them.